We'll close the boundary layer by clicking on the X. And now let's add a thematic layer. So now we want to add some actual data to this map. In order to do this, we can use the thematic layers 1 through 4. Let's add one layer first. So we'll click on the number 1, which represents our first thematic layer. We can then click on Edit Layer. We can see that the selection for data and periods is a bit different when compared to the pivot table and data visualizer tool. Here we select the data and the periods together in one tab. Previously, these were separated. In this first example, let's work with a data element. We will select data element from the value type. You can see the prompt changes from indicator group to data element group. We can work with the malaria data element group in this example. After we select the group, we can select our data element. We'll select RDT positives in this case. From the period type, we can select either a relative period or a predefined period. You can see these are now combined. Before you had a top and bottom area where you could select between relative and predefined periods. In the GIS application, you must define whether or not you're working with a relative or predefined period, and then subsequently select the period you want to work with. If I select relative period, you can see now that relative periods appear for me in the period selection. If I were to select a predefined period, such as yearly, then the periods available are associated with those predefined periods. Let's work with a relative period of this year. In a GIS map, you're only allowed to display data from one period at one time, so just keep that in mind when you're making these maps. After we've defined our data and our periods, we select our organization unit. So where do we want the data to come from? Typically, we work with organization unit levels. This is the default selection method. If you click on the gear icon, however, you can change the selection mode to be more specific, to select specific organization units. Let's change this to display the data by facility. From our dropdown, we'll deselect region and select facility. Our last tab is the options tab. We can define the legend type, the classes and the methods, the color scale, the low color size and the high color size, add the labels, and define the aggregation type. Let's discuss this in a little bit of detail. First, we'll start with the legend type. There are two types, automatic and predefined. We will come back to the predefined legend set in another example. Next, we can define the classes and the methods. In order to explain this a bit more, we'll update our map and walk through this. The color scale allows us to choose which colors to apply to the legend of the map. There are a number of different color scales that are available. For the low color and the high color size, this applies only to point-based data. If I'm looking at facility-based data, and we can change the low and high color size of these different points. We'll update the map and then see how we can change the low and high color size on the map itself. The aggregation type defines how I'm going to aggregate the data that I've chosen. In this case, we have selected the data element malaria RDT positives. By default, it is going to sum this data element. We can change how this is aggregated by selecting the aggregation type here. For now, we're just going to leave the aggregation type as the default. Let's click on Update in order to see the output of the map. 